and our weekly Q&A. It's good to be back with you guys after a week off. Tonight we are going to talk some of the basics, some of just helping you save on groceries by having a little bit more of a plan and always wherever your questions take us. So if you've got questions on saving money on anything, I am happy to jump in and help in any way that I can. So we're gonna talk about stockpiling, uh, which is a good word, not a like you bought 4,000 of something, but the way that that is gonna help you save on your groceries and then meal planning. And the two can go hand in hand. Uh, so they work well in terms of being a general topic together. But let's talk stockpiling first. Uh, and really when I say that word, I think there's a lot of folks that just immediately cringe because you're seeing where we've gone. You know, it's like uh, the old uh, TLC hoarders is where so many of us immediately go in our brain. I don't even know if that show is still around anymore, but we all know folks that are like that. And that is not what I'm talking about. So we need to build a stockpile of groceries, not because the world's gonna come to an end, it may, uh, but because the goal is to buy items when they're on sale and then not have to buy them again until they are back on sale. That is like bare bones, the first rule of saving money in the grocery store. I have to be able to only shop what is on sale. And I cannot do that if I do not have a stockpile. Now, a stockpile could be like four of an item. It's not 14 of an item. It's enough to last you until that item is back on sale. And here's the easy part. Sales on 95% of what you purchase run like clockwork every six weeks. So if I'm gonna go into the store and I'm gonna buy something that's on sale and we eat it maybe every other week, that means I need three of them, right? Every other week, got a six week window till it's back on sale. I need to head in and I need to buy three of that item to last me until the sale comes back around again. Now for some things, this is actually even easier because you're cool with changing up what the brand is. Maybe uh, cereal is a good example in our house. If all I did was buy one cereal, my children would stage a revolt. They'd be like, we're done. We don't wanna eat that cereal anymore. Um, so really for us, I'm gonna go in every week and I'm just gonna buy a couple cereals and next week I'll get a couple of whatever's on sale. I don't need to go in and get a buggy full of cereal. Now for some folks that is the case. Uh, we have some friends, I was trying to help them get their grocery budget under control recently and they have kids with some serious uh, food allergies and literally their kids can only eat rice checks. Uh, well, my first comment to them when they said that was, uh, rice checks are buy one, get one. This week in Publix, you need to go. Uh, and they did, you know, that's the goal. If your kids literally have one food they can eat, then you need to be there when that food is on sale and you need to buy enough of that food, potentially, to last you until the sale rolls back around. For most of us, that's not one box, one brand of cereal, um, but you get the idea. So for your family, it's enough to last you until that sale rolls back around, which is generally every six weeks. Now, one question I get from folks is, yes, but what if it's gonna be cheaper the next time? So maybe right now it's 25 cents a box and that's a crazy good price. And you're thinking, you know, on sale, we might normally see it for a dollar a box. Shouldn't I buy a hundred of them? Uh, no, you shouldn't. Uh, first, it's gonna go bad. You still need to limit yourself to what you can eat in a certain general period of time. So yes, maybe 25 cents a box right now on sale. We'll stick with the cereal for that one. That would be a crazy good price. You may be tempted to get a ton of boxes, um, but still getting it for a dollar in six weeks is still a crazy good price as well. When you think of where cereal is right now, what, like $6 a box, which is insane, um, for full price, and, and who would pay that, right? That's our goal, though. Uh, kind of, in a sense, it's like dollar cost averaging. We can think of it like investing, but we're gonna buy a little bit, 
each time enough to last us to the next sale. The sale may be slightly different, the price may be a little bit more, but you're still getting a great price. And I know with inflation numbers, that's been a big temptation for folks is, you know, we need to kind of nip this in the bud. We need to go ahead and grab everything we can before the price continues to climb. You're really gonna end up with food waste. You're gonna end up with things that go bad before you can get to them. Uh, you don't really wanna go overboard just sticking with six weeks. It's just a safe place to be before you find that really you've wasted some money because you couldn't get there or things did go bad. Um, worst case scenario, bugs get into your pantry. Um, if you have had a case of pantry moths, you know what that's like. Uh, and that can come home with anything that you bought in the grocery store. So they invade and all of a sudden your massive stock of cereal isn't looking so massive anymore because you're not gonna wanna eat it. Um, so let's stick with the six weeks. Uh, now, I want to try to jump to some questions here, so I'm going to start with the most recent ones that I see, and I'll work my way back. But Karen says, if you use a buy one, get one coupon on a buy one, get one free at, sa at sale at Publix, do you get both items free? So Karen, that's a great couponing question, and it, the answer is, it depends on where you live. So in, for Publix, in Florida, buy one, get one sales are true buy one, get one sales. You must purchase both of the sale items. The first one is full price, the second one is free. So if I use a buy one get one coupon on that sale, it is going to take off the full price of the first one and the second one is still free from the sale. So in Florida, a buy one get one coupon with a buy one get one sale does make for two free items. Outside of Florida for public shoppers, it does not do that. Uh, buy one get one sale outside of Florida is really just a big 50% off sale so you can purchase seven of something if you wanted to they're all just 50% off the buy one get one coupon is going to make one of them free you're still paying 50% of the second one so hopefully that helps it's a lot like math okay um, to jump back up um, Oh, awesome. So Karen says, Tennessee is having a tax holiday on food this summer and fall, August through October. And it's a huge, that is a huge savings in Tennessee. Tennessee, you'd normally pay 10% sales tax on food. And that's because Tennessee doesn't have a personal income tax. So in case everybody's like, whoa, Tennessee, that's crazy. Uh, they don't pay personal income tax. So they pay a much higher sales tax. The same for folks who live in Florida. Um, so exciting news for you guys in Tennessee, and thanks for sharing that. So August through October for folks in Tennessee. Um, let's see. Um, oh, and Karen, another question. When does the contact lens extra care buck deal come around at CBS? Do they have a sales cycle for extra care bucks? So let me approach the second question first. As we talk about stockpiling and buying enough to last you until it is back on sale again, that is a really great question. Uh, grocery stores run on a six week cycle for most products in the store. All right, let me go ahead and just hit the exceptions here across the board and then I'll answer the drugstore side. In the grocery store, there are some exceptions. Meat is one of them. Meat does not follow a six week cycle. It more follows a four week cycle. Uh, and you'll see it rotate between ground beef, chicken, pork, fish, kind of in that general rotation. Sometimes that fish rotation is other items too. So like we're rolling into Easter in almost a month, crazy that we are that, I mean, the year is just flying through already. So as we work in those holidays, then that week becomes your ham, uh, your Easter roast, those types of items. So uh, again, like ground beef, steaks, chicken, pork, they're rotating through, not always like this is beef week, this is chicken week. You get what I'm saying though. You're gonna see those items and then you're gonna see them again in about four weeks. So I don't have to go quite as long on fresh meat. Produce items, it's gonna rotate through again on a smaller basis based on what is in season though. So produce, I'm not gonna see strawberries, buy one, get one like they are right now uh, in Publix. I'm not gonna see crazy good strawberry sales in September. Strawberries are an early spring, late winter fruit. They are not in season in September. They're not gonna be crazy cheap. 
So for you, when it comes to produce, it really is focusing on what is in season right now. And um, like clockwork, guys, at the end of the month, very beginning of the month, um, we always post a what is on sale. Uh, and so tomorrow, that is going to go up for March, is um, the uh, produce and grocery sales for the month. And you need to look for those posts. Um, it's just a reminder to you every month of, okay, these are the key produce items that are gonna be on sale this month. These are the items that I wanna stock up on. Maybe I wanna get some in the freezer if they're really, really cheap so that I am set for when they are not on sale and they're not fresh. Um, so that answers some in the grocery store side. Now the drugstore side. How do the drugstore sales work in terms of sales cycles and maybe stocking up a little bit? So drugstores, we typically see sales on a once a month rotation that is the, the best sale. Uh, so what I mean by that is Tide, for example, is always gonna be part of some extra care buck deal, but it doesn't mean that it's the best deal for Tide. So this week in CVS, for example, it is a it is part of a buy 20 and get five dollars back in rewards well that's not really the deal that we would really want to grab you would really want to wait until it was part of a buy 30 and get 10. that's kind of the gold standard of the deals on detergent so i don't want to jump on the weeks unless you had to on the weeks that are the smaller reward uh, i really want to wait so we see that about once a month, even though in reality, like I said, Tide is always part of an extra care buck deal. So it's you kind of learning that price point for those items and what you're willing to pay for them. So um, since we've gone there, let me just take you um, to that next part. So if you're trying to stockpile on something, I really want to get it when it's the best price, right? I want to buy it when it's on sale so that I do not have to buy it again until it is back on sale. Well, that is where creating a um, kind of a, a price book or in your brain, just knowing, hey, I know I paid a dollar a box for that the last time it was on sale. I do not want to pay more than a dollar. If you can keep that in your head, that's awesome. That's me, I'm a numbers person. If you can't, then writing it down, having a little spreadsheet that you keep for yourself. So why do I have some other papers pulled up? So we keep this data for you and you can super, super easily access it anytime you want. But if you wanted to come over here on the homepage and use the item search. If you're in the app, this is on the bottom of the Apple app or it's in the top kind of hamburger is what they call it, the top little navigation box on uh, Android apps. But you will see the item search there in either place uh, and you can search by item, but the magical part is really this box right here. You can search back six months worth of data. So if you're trying to see what is the best price that we have seen on a particular item, that's gonna tell you. Um, so let's just do Pantene, for example. We're gonna pick a name brand. I'm gonna put back those whole six months. Um, really, I'm going back four here, but you can go back another two if you really wanted to. And it's gonna spit out that data. Now, you can tailor this, and I've already done it in my account, to only include the stores that I shop at. But we could change this and we could include every store that we cover on Southern Savers, which is a lot of stores. I don't wanna do that here. We were talking drug stores. So let's just look at CVS and let's look at Pantene sales across the last, what is basically five months as what I've gone back. There's a lot of Pantene sales in the last five months. But what we really wanna look at is kind of tuning out all the details and going for that makes it line, the math line so that you can quickly see, just by skimming, just by looking at that math line, hey, right here, this deal um, back in, this kind of starting from farthest back to most recent, but back in October, end of October, early November, we got Pantene down to $2. Um, we can keep on going, but you'll start to see kind of a trend. Um, here in December, we got it down to $1.33. Some of it just depends on the store coupons and the manufacturers, obviously, but you're gonna have a really good idea of what a going price for that product is in this store. Now again, I could look at all the stores if I wanted to, 
That's a lot of data. I mean, we're looking at six months worth of sales here. If you put in a lot of stores, you're gonna have to deal with what the results give you. But it is a really great way to be able to spot what is a good price on whatever that product is. And it's a really good way for you to see how often is it coming on sale. So I'm going all the way to the bottom. So they can look right now, Pantene is actually on sale this week. Um, and I can see, hey, you know what? It was on sale last week. Pantene's one of those like tied where it's always in a deal. Um, but I can start to get an idea of, yes, it's always in a deal, but what is that best price for it in this store or across a few stores? I know Pantene is probably not something that every single person is sitting there and you know really biting their fingernails wondering where the next sale is. But just to show you as an example, you can do that for any product. So I can immediately search when was the last sale? That's gonna tell me when the next sale is, right? How much longer do I have until it's back on sale? What's the going price on this item? Um, how low is it gone? So I know what I'm looking for. And then I can know, hey, I got one more week, hopefully it's gonna be back on sale and I can grab enough for six weeks. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Okay, um, so to answer that other side of that question, Karen, which was the contact lens extra care buck deal, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'm gonna tell you it's probably gonna be next week. So the contact lens deal, uh, which is contact solution really is what you mean, um, contact solution deal in the drugstores usually lines up when we get new contact co uh, solution coupons and those are actually coming in this coming Sunday's paper. So I do not have the CVS ad yet. They um, no longer print an ad. So I get that ad when you get that ad on Thursday mornings. I used to always get them a week early, so it's, it's hard for me. Uh, but knowing that we are getting coupons in Sunday's paper, I feel pretty confident in, in saying that you are going to have a deal on Contact Solution next week to go along with those new coupons. Um, so you've got a deal in Walgreens with a store coupon and that manufacturer coupon that's coming or probably gonna have an extra care buck deal to go along with that coupon too. Um, oh, so Lynn is chiming in and saying she learned to buy on sale from her mother and grandmother, but also she keeps a two to four week stockpile for blizzards and layoffs. Uh, yes, well, that's really where your stockpile comes in handy not just because you bought it on sale, but when a hurricane comes where we are, we don't get a lot of blizzards in my part of South Carolina, but if a hurricane's coming through the whole world's out buying bread and milk, we're good. We just kind of hunker down. There's really not anything that we're gonna have this crisis moment on. Uh, we are gonna have enough of a stockpile. A couple of years ago, actually, you know, I think we've all probably at this point had this moment, but uh, I, uh, getting COVID on Christmas Eve. Uh, this was, oh goodness, two over two years ago. COVID on Christmas Eve didn't mean that I, you know, was immediately needing to go to a grocery store. Uh, it was Christmas Eve and kind of a bummer, but we had everything that we needed to fully quarantine and hunker down for a few weeks and not have to leave the house. So there's a lot of perks to having a stockpile. Um, but the biggest perk being that you are saving a chunk of money by not having to pay full price for those items. Um, now I do want to uh, kind of emphasize one thing that I jumped right in to buying it on sale and buying enough of it. And I really skipped over one important fact. And that is that if we're gonna follow sales cycles, we can only do that in stores that run sales. Just gonna leave it like that. Uh, there are some stores that we have all been told is uh, where it is always low prices, but it's not. They are not the best prices in town. So if I wanna get the lowest prices on groceries, it is not where it has always low prices. It is where they run sales and where they run promotions. So there is no needing to stockpile or needing to follow sales if I am shopping in that big box store. Uh, yes, maybe that makes it sound easier, but you can beat every single one of those always low prices when you actually follow sales. 
and sales cycles. So just putting in that effort, literally not even cutting the coupons here, guys, just putting in the effort to follow the sales, buy it when it's on sale and buy enough of it is going to cut your grocery budget. And that might, it might be hard for you to believe if you've not done it or you are a diehard, uh, you know, grocery pickup person, just try it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can convince you in just one or two grocery shopping trips when you start to see like, whoa, uh, that actually worked. We did actually beat those prices on many, many items um, just by focusing on what was on sale and getting enough of them until they were back on sale again. Um, so how do I decide, uh, oh, sorry, how do they decide what to tax? I bought a stroller at Walmart and paid no tax and a bassinet at Target and that had tax. So uh, that is a very good question, Paige. Most of it is all based on your county and those are auto inputted into the computer system. So um, some of it, I'm gonna guess, has been decided to be like a necessity item that they're not gonna tax, and some is considered not a necessity item, so it still falls in under taxable items. Um, but that is truly just state by state and in their um, sales tax code. The stores are going to auto use that code. They really purchase programs from third-party companies that have all this automatically inserted so that they do not mess up. Believe me, that is one of their big goals in life is to not mess up on charging, undercharging or overcharging on sales tax because it is gonna come to bite them in the end. But that's probably what it is, is whether it is determined a necessity baby item and in one where you live, some baby items are gonna possibly be on that no tax list and then other items are not considered necessity and they are considered kind of splurge so they are still going to be taxed. Um, oh, Amanda, great question. I'd really like to start getting some food preservation items, food saver, pressure canners, etc. When is the best time to get these items? Um, so in terms of grabbing um, those small appliances basically, pressure canner, food saver, it is really watching for sales around them. There's not necessarily like a, this is the magical month to get a vacuum sealer. What I would do is watch foodsaver.com. Food Saver runs a lot of great discounts directly from their website on their brands. That's a name brand for vacuum sealer. And they also sell refurbished products that still have warranties with them. So watching for them to update their refurbished products or to run some coupon codes on their refurbished products from Food Saver is some of the best sales that we see. Um, we do also see decent prices in Target on Food Savers um, and even Kohl's and some other brands, um, other websites. So you'll see Amazon. There are some off brands as well that a lot of folks might recommend. We have a Food Saver, so it's hard for me to um, recommend anything else because I've never used anything else. Um, right now they're saying buy three qualifying products and get 30% off, but you'll actually just see 30% off and 40% off sales from them uh, a good amount of time. They do, here's one just on clearance that's refurbished and 40% off. So uh, if one of these kind of strikes your fancy, the refurbished models are still great models and do have some, some warranty behind them. Um, they're gonna make for one of the best deals that you can get. Now, pressure canner, um, that is not something that comes on sale often. I would probably wait, see if you can get a Kohl's coupon code or um, potentially see if it'll go on sale and maybe Amazon will match it, that kind of thing. Um, just not a common item that a lot of folks grab. I will tell you, before you dive into a pressure canner, do some hunting, head to YouTube, it is really, really simple to do um, hot water canning on your stove just using a big stock pot um, and some kitchen towels in the stock pot. You're filling it with water. They're not going to burn. But the towels are just keeping the jars from banging against each other. So I don't need to grab, I don't need to go and buy like the cages that are going to hold the jars still. Really, all you need to grab. If you want to do a hot water canning, um, having done this, um, 
uh, is, I'm, I'm pulling it up to show you. I don't know if I can think of what the name of it is. Um, we have one in the drawer, but I think I would be sending my husband on a goose hunt to dig through. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. So it's this canning jar grabber. Um, let's, here, here we go. I knew if I did it enough of a hunt, I could think of what people would call them. So they make all these little baskets where you can lower your cans into the hot water. You don't really need to go there. Just a stock pot and kitchen towels, one on the bottom to keep the jars from hitting the bottom of the pot, and then towels between the jars so they're not gonna bang against each other. Um, you're gonna fill it with water. I promise you the towels will not burn, but you do need one of these little doohickeys right here. So just splurge, grab a $9 uh, canning jar lifter because you're not going to want to reach your hand in there but if you've got one of these I don't really need this fancy basket I can just reach in and grab each one of them and put them out to cool um, it works just as well compared to the pressure canner pressure canner you're literally looking at 100 150 for this canner uh, but you still need to buy the jars and you still need to buy new lids even if you have old jars it becomes this very expensive purchase that in the end you're left with did i actually save money by putting up all my veggies maybe if you use your pressure canner year after year after year but hot water canning is what your great grandma did it's what your grandma did and it worked fine for them uh, it's gonna work great for you just get a jar lifter for nine bucks and you are pretty set to get started. And you know, maybe you do find you're ready to dive in and to do that pressure canner, but at least give yourself a, I'm gonna attempt hot water canning, see how easy that is, see whether it's something you even like to do before you go and buy a very expensive small appliance that is just gonna sit in the corner. <laughs> That's where they live for me. Like literally behind me on the floor is my Instapot and a rice cooker uh, because I don't know where you're supposed to keep these things. Just the corner of your dining room is where they live for me. Um, I don't have that much cabinet space to keep all these random little tiny appliances. So big sock pot, kitchen towels and a cart and, and a jar grabber. Um, by the way, what I what I searched on Amazon for that was canning jar lifter, in case you're curious as to how to find it. Um, but that is what I would encourage you to look at. Again, search on YouTube if you want some other advice there too of watching people hot water bath canning. Um, it is very simple to do. Okay, um, what day is the best day to shop for markdowns on meat and dairy living in North Carolina? So um, honestly, there is not a particular day based on state or based on city. That day is really based on your store. So you are going to want to head in and you're going to want to ask your store, hey, is there a particular day that you mark down meat or produce items or just in general that you do more markdowns versus other days? Sometimes that corresponds to like the last day of the weekly ad or the first day of the weekly ad. It's when they're gonna get a big truck because if they get a big truck of a whole bunch of fresh meat, they're gonna need to get that fresh meat out in the, in the uh, cabinets. What are we gonna call that? In the refrigerated cases. Um, but then that's only good for a certain amount of time. So if a whole bunch of fresh meat all hits on the same day, then X number of days after that, it is all gonna need to be marked down of what's left. So asking your store when they do those markdowns and then you trying to be there. Even go another step further and ask them, is there a certain time of day that you mark down? Because a lot of times, especially in the meat department, it's not just every meat employee who can mark things down. It's usually the meat manager that marks things down. So it's finding out when does that person work? Uh, you know, Do they work in the evenings? Do they work in the mornings? So that I can be here shortly after they have marked down items not not just the day but very much sometimes the time i mean this is clearance meat right it's a first come first serve and you want to make sure that you're there when it happens um lynn i know you love your personal lynn lynn is asking what is a good price on personal and the 50 ounce um so lynn that would be another one where i 
can, I will use the item search for you here. Um, but even looking back, let's look at Purcell across all stores really quick um, and hit search. This is all stores for the last five months. So it's a lot of sales. Look at all those sales on Purcell. Um, this isn't necessarily searching the 50 ounce or really, really what is now the 40 ounce. Purcell did make their product 10 ounces smaller. Um, but looking for just the 40 ounce, we've had it at $4.99. I know we've seen it as low as $3.99 in the past. It really, really hinges on whether or not you currently have Purcell coupons. So that one can be a tricky one. Uh, I'm seeing what, uh, you don't have a Rite Aid near you probably, but Rite Aid had it at $3.99 back in November. Um, it's been a chunk since we've had really great Purcell coupons. Kind of scrolling fast here. I'm seeing a lot of $4.99 here lately. Um, oh, $3.99 right there at the beginning of um, February in CVS. That was with a CVS Extra Care Buck deal. So it's all about, again, that coupon. So we had a $2 off coupon there. The coupon was good for only two weeks. So do watch that with personal coupons in that they um, don't give them to us for very long. Uh, we do have one that just came out on the 19th of February. So you could go hunting for personal deals this week before that one's gone too. Um, but again, that that two or sorry, $3.99, $4.99 is what looks to be the best price. Uh, okay. Um, and Latham says, I only buy it if it's on sale and my family knows that too. That's important. Getting everybody in the family to be in agreement with how we are going to shop. My kids learned a long time ago. You don't ask mama for something. Hey mom, will you buy pop tarts? It's more, the question is always phrased. Mama, when will Pop-Tarts be back on sale? Um, they've also learned since COVID, they won't. I haven't bought Pop-Tarts in years, um, but you get the idea. It's about changing the way that we all approach the grocery store. You don't give me a list of what you want and then expect me to bring it home. I'll file it away and if I see those things on sale and feel like they aren't too much of a splurge, I'll go ahead and grab them. Um, but it's a rare, rare thing for me to just grab items that are full price. With the exception of my husband, there are times that I will just know, you know what, he would really like to have this for dinner. It may not be buy one, get one, but it'll be a little bit on sale. And I will always come home and be like, look what I got you. It was a splurge just for you. Um, so it's my, I guess, own little way of letting him know that I'm at least considering his uh, his wants in the grocery store, but all the other people around here, there's way too many of us for everybody to get to have little tiny moments of not on sale. It's only coming home if it's on sale. Okay, let's merge off of sales and stocking up and go over to meal planning really quick. So I will tell you, this is we're going into year 15 for me of running Southern Savers, which is kind of crazy. And when we first started, um, I first started the blog when I was really first learning how to save on groceries. I was not a big meal planner. Um, meal planning, if anything, was really hard for me because I would make a plan and then it would be dinner time and I wouldn't want what was on the plan. Like, eh, that's not what I'm in the mood for. And so meal plans didn't tend to work. We were constantly subbing something else in or changing our minds. Uh, so I really didn't do them for quite a while. Now, some of that too, our kids were really little. And so sometimes they kind of ate their own meal and then we ate later. And when it was just the two of us, it really was down to what did we feel like? Uh, every night was a date night. You don't realize how good you have it when your kids are really young and they go to sleep. And then they turn into teenagers and you realize, you realize then what you had when they were little. Um, but meal planning now is something that is incredibly helpful, A, for staying on budget, but also just because you do have a plan. It's not a first, let me figure out what I'm going to make for dinner and then let me sit down and make it. You're taking away one whole part of kind of angst about dinner when you have a set plan. If you are super organized and you're cool with taking that a bit further and having at least a mental plan for breakfast and lunch, 
that is also gonna save you from extra trips to the grocery store, from realizing that your kids ate things that you had planned for future meals. Yes, that happens in every household. Um, just, I'm not saying you have to map out meals, specific meals for those breakfasts and lunches, but that you have a plan and your family kind of knows. Um, you know what? These things are off limits for lunch. In our house, lunch is on your own. Breakfast is too, for that matter. Maybe Saturday morning I cook you breakfast, but not every day. But lunch in our house, our kids know A is leftovers, B is sandwiches, and C is soups, like a canned soup. I will even get them ramen noodles because they think that's amazing. Um, <laughs> you know, if it makes you happy. But it is not going into the fridge and making your own meal from scratch. Uh, first off, most of them don't want to do that anyway. Uh, my teenagers, there are times where I'm like, you must eat lunch. <laughs> I know that it takes an effort, but you must stop and eat. Um, but if they did go in and say, you know what, I'm going to just make something right now for lunch, they're going to run into the risk of grabbing things that I have preset and pre-planned for actually dinner. Uh, so leftovers, sandwiches, soups are our normal fare for lunch. Uh, and there can be a little bit of a crazy free-for-all for leftovers. Once they're gone, they're gone. Um, but that's how we plan it. Breakfast is usually soups, oatmeal, bagels. Those are the three things that I keep on hand. Um, some of us may skip breakfast and just have coffee, but everybody kind of knows what those options are too. Then dinners. So dinners are where I do actually plan out at least what the entree will be. So sometimes that meal plan looks like um, Lipton onion soup burgers, rice, and a veggie. I don't necessarily specify the veggie. Uh, a lot of times it's where I let the kids like, hey, go to the freezer and pick two veggies and come back in. Uh, we eat a lot of those green giant boxed frozen veggies. They're buy one, get one for 99 cents. I know at Lowe's Foods right now, they're all a dollar. Um, that's a great price. And I encourage you sometime to sit down and open up a box veggie and then open up a can and put them next to each other. Um, I personally feel that that box veggie has more in it than these cans do. So we tend to eat those frozen green giant box veggies grab two of them, rice and meat. That's a normal fare around here. We do eat a lot of rice. Uh, it's a good, easy filler for a large family. Um, if you're trying to stay away from some grains, then it's looking at other easy feel fillers that are not necessarily uh, your easy starches. So uh, you can do some searches if you wanna go healthy and look up resistant starches. Uh, my husband was focusing on trying to kind of really stick to a diet over the last month. And so we learned a lot on resistant starches, but you know, everyone's gonna have a sweet potato tonight or half of a sweet potato. Still grabbing potatoes is cheaper than going fancy with other more expensive veggies. So you're using some filler to help folks feel full without um, spending as much of your budget. That's the goal, right? So uh, a normal meal plan for us, again, is that entree, that meat, and then a starch of some sorts and a veggie. Uh, don't always plan out the starches. A lot of times rice just becomes my answer to a, a filler item if I need to. Now, some things on um, meal planning in general. I've shared this in the past, but there is a really great website if you want to try to use it. I know uh, they have a like create an account, but you can use the website without creating an account if you want. Uh, and that is Supercook. So Supercook is a, a super easy to use. And you are going to sit here and you're going to basically say, what I recommend really is coming down to your meats and plugging in your meat. Um, maybe like right now, I was just digging through our freezer. We've got a lot of bacon. Um, so I can say, you know what, I've got bacon. I can plug in some other things that we have. And for me, like I think bacon and I immediately think um, we're gonna just eat breakfast all the time. But there's a lot of things that we can make here um, th that are more than just bacon, even though that appears to be what immediately pulls in when I click on bacon. Um, but we can plug in other uh, things that we have in the pantry. So maybe I have some potatoes and some onions 
some t uh, tomatoes, um, bell pepper. We can just sit here and click on things until we start to see some recipes and you're like, ooh, that sounds really, really good. We should try that. Um, bacon wrapped potato wedges. Sounds delicious. Uh, bacon wrapped potatoes. So just in the few things that we have or that I've already plugged in that it's returning. Grilled potato and bacon skewers. Um, now, bacon's a strange one to pick and it might not be what you have an excess of, but if you're just looking like, hey, this is the meat that I'd like to use today, so give me some ideas. That's literally all I did was I started with the meat, which is at the bottom of the list, um, and then started to plug in some veggies to help uh, recipes actually populate over here. So you can click over here, you can go straight to where that recipe is. Usually it's across the internet. So some of these, um, and you may not be able to see it on your computer, but some are food.com and Martha Stewart and just various websites that it's pulling in all these recipes based on the ingredients that you've put in. So that is supercook.com. It's super helpful in using things that you already have on, on hand. So you're plugging in your pantry and they are going to help you figure out what you have. Now you can create an account and it would basically save your pantry. Um, but you can always just come in here and plug some things in just to get some ideas. Uh, in terms of recipes and saving money, I would really, really encourage you to only put one, maybe two new recipes per week on your meal plan. The reason for that is that new recipes are, they're going to be normally what you don't have on hand. So if you just love to look at cookbooks and you're flipping through cookbooks, falling in love with the idea of something, that's really expensive. You know, if I said, hey, I, ooh, I would love to make some tiramisu this week. I own nothing that would, I, I've got the sugar and the cinnamon, uh, but I'm going to need to go buy or make a whole bunch of ladyfingers, mascarpone cheese. We've got a long list of things that I do not keep in the fridge, nor does that really go on sale all that often. So I don't want to just have these, you know what I'm in the mood for tonight? That's really, really expensive. You might as well go to a restaurant. That's how expensive it is. Um, so sticking with your normal fare that everybody enjoys and then plugging in one or two new recipes a week, using Supercook to do that is gonna help too because you're gonna focus on meats you already have on hand rather than just scouring the internet for something that sounds yummy. Uh, and then if you love that recipe, great. Work on making sure that you have those items in your pantry, in your stockpile to work from and work that recipe into your routine. Um, so some other things that you can do to help in meal planning, and this is where Southern Savers can come into, um, but if you have not seen them already, we do give you a meal plan each week for Publix and Kroger. So if you... Um, are on the top of the site and you come to Publix, you will see in the drop down meal plans and you can click on that and you will see each and every single Publix meal plan. The one for this coming week is already up. So you can click on that Publix meal plan and immediately see all the dinner ideas that go along with this week's buy and get one sale. So again, go to Publix over here. Meal plans is right there in the flyout. The same for Kroger, Kroger meal plans. And another one is to go to the frugal living section over here and click on menu plans. So we have lots of options for you. The Publix ones and the Kroger ones are there every week, but there are others that will pop in too, including as we get back here, every single month, we give you a free monthly meal plan. So the February monthly meal plan or the March monthly meal plan, which will also be coming very soon. Um, this is a downloadable, clickable, they, it takes you straight to the recipes um, for each of those items uh, and you can sit there and grab whatever it is that you want. Uh, you don't have to use them all, you know, that's not how we plan this, that you're gonna immediately cook everything we're cooking, but it is giving you some kind of an idea of how could we fill our meal plan. Do you need to meal plan monthly? No, meal planning once a month is somewhat extreme for some of us. I, I mean, our schedule is always changing. Kids have events, things are changing in terms of, oh, now it's not on this day, it's on this day. So 
I am not so great at sticking to a full monthly meal plan, uh, but we do, uh, on a weekly basis, we do pretty great. Some days are not gonna change for you at all. I know that Mondays for us are pretty killer. Every other week, we're eating dinner in the car on the way home so that I can be here by 8.30. Sandwiches were, were put together back at like four o'clock when we left the house. But that is part of our meal plan so that I know that every other Monday, I have everything we need to make those sandwiches for picnic in the car night, basically. A lot of folks love Taco Tuesday or at least Mexican Tuesday. Having a theme that your family sticks with is great and your family finds it fun, but in reality, this is reducing some stress for you. I don't need to think about what goes on Tuesday. I just know it's going to be Mexican. And from there, I can maybe pick between tacos and enchiladas and burrito casserole, which is another favorite in our house. Um, so leftover night on Saturday, you get the idea. Make your own pizza night on Friday. Our week is filling up pretty fast without needing a lot of like creativity. I didn't have to sit down and rack my brain over what we were gonna eat on different days. Some days are just automatically set based on your schedule, based on routines, things that your kids like or your family likes for those particular kind of items. Okay, um, let's see. I'm trying to jump back through questions. Um, Mandy says, is it harder for me to find deals now? I used to get free toothpaste all the time and now it's hit or miss. Oh, so Mandy, you still wanna focus on drugstores, CVS and Walgreens both. Um, Walgreens has been the winner on free toothpaste. I know this week they both have toothpaste at 49 cents a tube. Um, not free, but 49 cents still isn't bad, but they do regularly still run free toothpaste in both Crest and Colgate. So don't give up on that one. It is definitely still there. Um, drugstore wise, I actually don't feel like much has changed in the sales that we're seeing and the coupons that we're seeing. So I feel like the drugstore deals are still pretty amazing. Grocery store deals, I do feel like they're a little tighter than they were even three years ago. Some of that is that across the board, the amount of coupons that are available has decreased. So you're working with a lot of mobile apps right now, not a lot of paper coupons. Um, and then you're trying to grab sales but you're having to go just with the sale price, not with an additional discount off the sale price. It's something, but it's just not as great as it might have been on those particular items. Um, in terms of coupons, you do want to get the Sunday paper. You may not need every Sunday, but there are still some. This coming Sunday, the 5th of March, is going to be a pretty great week for inserts. Um, we're going to have a lot of PNG coupons, by the way. Not a PNG insert, but a lot of PNG coupons. Um, and then sticking with your mobile apps to try to save where you can too. Uh, oh, and Wendy is chiming in with a freebie for folks. IHOP has free pancakes tomorrow. So thanks, Wendy, for that one. Um, okay, and um, let's see. Uh, off topic for Lynn, I'm opening up an IRA CD. Do you think a 12 month is good at 4.5%? That is not a bad price, Lynn. I um, am not a huge fan of CDs. Um, even in an IRA standpoint, uh, you're just locking yourself in when there's a good chance that um, things are gonna kind of keep rising. But I will tell you, Lynn, the go-to for me is always to go to bankrate.com. So I went to Bankrate, I clicked on IRAs and CDs. I'm seeing Capital One, Ally, all are at 5% uh, with zero minimum deposit on those. Um, this is a 5% with a 11 month Capital One um, CD. This is not an IRA CD, this is just a CD. Uh, so let's go to just, but even there, clicking off um, that I can still get a 5%. Um, I don't know what that bank is, but there's a lot there um, using that. I, I hesitate to put anyone into a CD um, and always have, you're locking your money in and I can guarantee you it always works out in the favor of the bank. That is why they offer them. It does not work out in your favor. Um, it is always going to go against you uh, in terms of that. Guys, in all honesty, I would still 
encourage you to um, look at I-bonds. I-bonds are still um, a great uh, saving source for you. You cannot put them into an IRA. You just own the I-bonds, but Series 1 I-bonds are still super high, 6.89%. Uh, as long as you purchase it before April 30th, that rate will get re-evaluated on May 1st, but that rate is based on the current inflation rate, and it isn't going to massively drop between now and April 1st. The, or April 30th, sorry, May 1st, a new rate will be given, and that is a set rate for the next six months. So this is a very, very good place to put money uh, right now is those Series 1 I-bonds. You only have to hold them for 12 months as well. So um, that would be my push. I know you're trying to put it into an IRA, and these cannot go into an IRA, so I'm not helping you there. Um, but I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a huge CD fan. At 4.5%, it's a reasonable rate. Um, definitely, if you are semi-close to retirement, it is better than bonds. Um, so you're at least beating a you stuck it in under a mattress rate, uh, right? Um, but that's still kind of what you're doing. Uh, and in theory, the stock market is going to beat that. So that's where I hesitate to put anyone into a CD Um I would encourage you more to put it into an IRA that is invested in um, just some well-ranged mutual funds that are still earning. Um, there are some great mutual funds out there uh, and going through Schwab, going through some of the big brokers, they don't charge anything. These are free accounts to open, free accounts to invest, no trading fees to invest. And a lot of them even have advisors that can hop on the phone with you for free and you can tell them, you know, hey, I'm looking at retiring in 10 years. I'm wanting to earn, uh, you know, a safe amount with medium or low risk. And they can help put you in the right mutual fund that's probably going to make a little bit better than 4.5% as the stock market comes back. Now, um, does that mean that it's going to come back in the next six months? No, but your goal in investing, this isn't necessarily stockpiling or meal planning, but your goal in investing is to buy when the market is down. So uh, does it mean it's gonna go lower? I, I can't tell you that, no one can tell you that, but it's still a good time to still be putting money into those investment accounts because it is going to come up. And I can tell you that. Uh, any low period in the stock market is always followed actually by significant growth. So once we can get out of the doldrums that we're in, uh, it's going to be a pretty great place to be. Could you time it to magically buy the day before that? Uh, I doubt it. So going ahead and just um, having a tiny bit of risk, going with some you know very moderate risk is still a pretty safe bet to be in. Even if you're looking at retiring in the next five years, you do not need to be full bonds or full CDs for safe, risk-free investments. Um, it's still a good place to put yourself. Okay, um, Homestead and Crazy, how do I save if we're not getting coupons in the paper? So if you're not getting a lot of coupons in the paper, I don't know that you're necessarily missing out on a chunk. Most of our stores have tons of digital coupons, so it's always using the digital coupons that are available, available in your store as well as mobile apps. And so really the easiest way to do this, guys, is to get into a habit of using the barcode scanners that are in every single one of these apps. So if I grab a product, I can immediately scan the barcode and I can know whether or not there are any deals on this particular product. So this guy right here, there's not any offers on him, but I hope some of you guys grabbed this because what was this, maybe a month or so ago, two months ago, this was completely free. It was on sale for $2 and we had an Ibotta offer for $2. So the mobile apps do come in handy and using those mobile apps to get, even this one was a limit of one, I could only do it one time, but it's still free. Um, that's pretty fun. So the easiest way to spot these, I do try to list them on Southern Savers, but again, just heading into your app, oh, it's going dim, and using that barcode scanner that's up there in the search box. 
that's the Ibotta app, but your grocery stores, most of them all have barcode scanners now too. So I can open up whatever grocery store it is that I'm at. I can click on that barcode scanner and then immediately have whether or not there are any coupons on that product. Walgreens is a great one. CVS also great. So my folks that are trying to shop the drugstore deals and get your free toothpaste uh, for, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're hunting down, that's super easy. If I see a deal, I see that it's got a reward on it. Just pick it up, scan the barcode and see, does it also have a coupon that might make that reward with the coupon a pretty sweet offer? Um, but that's the, the one that you want to do every time. Uh, Jill says, what's the name of the site that I used? Um, so Jill, the website that I used to hunt for those rates was bankrate.com. Uh, and with Bankrate, you plug in what you're looking for. So I went to CDs because that's what Lynn was asking about. But if you're looking for savings accounts, investing accounts, you can come in here um, and click on anything that you're looking for. So uh, let's say that I want to go, I don't want IRA. I, you could do a money market IRA, but even just looking at savings and money markets right now, I could go to Marcus Bank, zero minimum deposit, 3.75% interest. That's way better than your checking account is currently earning, guys. Um, so taking advantage of those, staying away from some of these if you wanted to. Like, why do I want to let Bank of America have 0.01%? I don't. Um, a lot of your really great rates, by the way, if you are looking for these offers, are with online banks. Capital One is a great online bank. We have had a money market account with them for years. Um, it takes about two days to transfer money between one account to the other. So our local checking account transfer over to Capital One through the Capital One account. Two days later, it's gonna show up in Capital One. The helpful part there, I can't immediately spend that. So if I went to the store and I was like, I really wanna buy this crazy expensive thing, I'm gonna need to have a two day wait on that because I'm gonna need to move the money back to the checking account. That's a good thing. Having a little bit of a thinking time on any large purchase is important so it's not a problem to have your money not in a local bank, um, but you're going to earn way higher interest rates than you would in a local brick and mortar bank to be in those online banks. Okay. We were all over the board tonight, but I love that. Um, kind of like you're like helping me dust off my brain cells, right? And have to think about lots of different things. So I'm going to go ahead and hop off. I will be back on tomorrow. We are going to get back into the swing of things of drugstore videos and whatnot. We've been on vacation for the last week with our kids enjoying their winter break. Um, so back at it. I have, I just finished just before we went live, adding in all of the new Walgreens month long deals and couponing them. I just need to finish the CVS list. Um, but we will, I will be back on tomorrow at one o'clock for all of this week's drugstore deals as well as the new month-long deals that are running in Walgreens. So hopefully you can catch that live. If not live, you can always catch it after the fact. It is recorded and on our Facebook page and on YouTube. Um, so feel free to ask any questions. Always feel free to share any other deals you find on those drugstore videos too. Glad to share them with as many folks as we can. And thanks for joining me tonight. I hope that maybe it give you a little bit of encouragement to keep buying those sales and stockpiling a little bit more so you can make it to the next sale. That's the goal. Never buy it unless it's on sale. And maybe a little bit of encouragement to you to focus on your meal plans a little bit more one week at a time, just so we can stick with what we have on hand and make a few less trips to the grocery store. So thanks for joining me. I will talk to you again soon. Y'all have a great night.